okay, you guys want to see what bond quilt that we're going to make today? I've had this one up here for about two years. And I was trying to think of what barn quilt you guys may want to see when I thought about this hummingbird. And I realized that I had never made one for you. So that's what we're going to do. See her? Let's get the wood out of the potting shed and we'll get started. Okay, now before I get cranked up good, <laughs> I got to throw out a southern biscuit here. If you follow my channel, you probably noticed that I hadn't put a video up in quite a while. Well, I had a lot of facial surgery and had bone grafts and all this stuff. And I think that I'm just getting to where I can talk and you can understand what I'm saying. But if you miss something, I didn't say it correctly, just put a note in the comments asking me what I said. Or even if you didn't understand <laughs> at all what I meant to say, just leave me a note in the comments and I'll, I'll answer you back, I promise. But if you like what you see, I gotta say, click the bell. No, you have to subscribe first and then click the bell and then hit notifications so you'll see the next upload. Cause what I plan to do is do this in a two or three videos. I'm gonna draw out the pattern for you today and then we'll get into the tips and tricks on how to paint what kind of paint, uh, what kind of board, and all that. But today, we're just going to draw the pattern. So you folks who already know how to make barn quilts and you already have your favorite tools picked out, you may want to come back for some tips and tricks because I've learned a couple of new things since I uploaded video number 50, which was the tips and tricks. And if I can figure out how to link that video, I will. But I've learned a few extra things since then, so you may want to come back for part two. But this is part one, and let's get started. Here is my pattern, and I have purple paint all over it, as you can see. When I'm painting a barn quilt, I always have my pattern laying beside of me. And a lot of times, you know, I'm a messy person and I get paint all over it. But what I've done here, and let me see if I can lift you up a little bit more. How's that? What I've done here is numbered. This is a piece of, uh, let me start all over. This is a piece of graph paper, but it's those uh, flip charts that, you know, if you've worked in an office or somewhere, uh, leading any kind of planning sessions or whatever. We used to use them all the time. And so a friend of mine used that for her uh, graphs, or her patterns. And I thought, what better way to show you guys how to do this than to use this graph flip chart. So what I did is numbered them 1 through 24 so that, and I did that so that you could follow along with me when I'm drawing the pattern. It just makes it that much easier. And don't worry about all these grid marks because I'll show you how to get rid of them real simple. And so I went 1 through 24 horizontally and I also did it vertically. So when I say start at number 14, you'll know what I'm talking about. All right. So this is, a, like I said, 24 by 24, and what I want on this one, um, I want a 2 inch border. So we're just going to draw off our 2 inches first. And you know, uh, I may end up wanting a double border, 
So if I do, I would just draw out one inch instead of two. And you can do that later. You can make your mind up about that later. But for now, we're just going to make a two inch border and go from there. I think if I do this, it'll help me stay focused on where I am on my pattern and it'll be easier for you guys too. Here you go. Now we've got our two inch border all the way around it. Now we can start drawing our pattern. Let's see. I tell you what let's do. Just so we can focus in on the hummingbird and where he is on the board on the pattern. Let's draw those flowers that you saw. Now, you can get creative here. I just drew these simple flowers. I didn't want anything taken away from my hummingbird because he is the focus here and I didn't want anything distracting from him. So I just drew simple flowers on here. But you can get as creative as you want to. But these, these are simple flowers. You just go over. I'm going to get you right here. So you can see it. Now. Alright. You just count. We're on, the, we're on the right hand side of our graph paper now. So in the corner, you just count to the left. Two. And then you see you've got two more here, and we're just going to draw a line that way. And then, that's right. Yeah, because this is a smaller one. We're just doing a smaller one now. And so you're staying in the same row, but you're just drawing a diagonal line. And then we're going to come back down. And then we got our first little petal. See that? That's not hard. And then for the inside, we just go to the next row and do the same thing. See that? We're just going diagonally from the bottom to the top, right to left. And we're going to come back to this. And then for the inside, we'll just draw, draw a little block like that. And that'll be yellow. Or whatever color you want it to be. And then now let's draw the big one. And the big one is the same thing as a smaller one, only we're counting more blocks. So we're going to go down four blocks this time, one, two, three, four, and draw our diagonal line that way. And then we're going to go one, two, three, four, and draw our diagonal line here. Then we're going to come back to the center, or to the first block. All right. We've got our first leaf. And then we're going to go down three and draw another one. And come back. See, we're just drawing straight lines. That's all we're doing. A quilt block. You know, when you're sewing, um, I'm not a seamstress and I can't do quilts, but I know a lot of fine seamstress and quilt makers in my time. 
my grandparents, mama, all of them. I just can't do it. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know why I can't do it. Okay, now let's. What I was trying to say is, you know, you have to have some straight lines and you have to have your seams straight. So that's what this flower is. It's like if you were making a quilt, that's what it would look like, but it would be different. It would be cloth and we're making a barn quilt. So here you go. And for this little, the little tiny flower in the corner, I did not want that to be too big or distracting, but I needed something to go in there. So I just made, I'm just making something a little simple and I can draw, um, I can paint every other block white and then every other block with a color like purple or um, whatever color you want your flower to be, but it's just a little tiny flower. It won't distract from our bird. Okay, now. We're going to start drawing his little tail feathers. And we're going to start, let me change the color pen. And you're still seeing this. So we're going to start at number 16 over here. And we're going to go up to. So when you're drawing your pattern, there's 16, and that's where we're going to go to start with. And you can just follow along with my lines, over and down, and over, and down, and then we're going to go diagonally. We're going to do that twice. Two times. Now see, we ended on 10. At the end of 10, that's where we are. So now, this, this is going to make his little tail feather span out. And I have to tell you, now, some, some of this, you know, like maybe that little flower or something like that is my pattern. But I saw this on Pinterest, and so I started playing with it and figured out how to draw it. So that's what I'm showing you. I would tell you who, who originally made this pattern, but I don't know. But somebody was smart <laughs> had to figure this out. And I just looked at it and figured it out. I could I don't know that I could have come up with this originally. Okay, let me I digressed. We went up and then went over and up. over and up again and then we went over and up again all right you see that do that first because we're going to build a foundation of this bird we're going to build a foundation and then we're going to go up that I have to work from the bottom a lot of times, and that, that just helps me. All right, now, to start making the body of our little bird, we want to go to 14, and then we're going to count up to the top of number 8. So here's 14, here's 14. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. No. We're going to go to that's 
that right? One, two, three, four, five, six. That's right, the top of, I'm sorry. The top of number eight across, see? Here's eight, here's 14. So where, where that intersects, that's where you're gonna start drawing this line. And you're gonna go with 14 and 13. You could have started at 13 and 8 and went over 2. Either way, would work. All right, now we got to give him a little bit of definition here in this spot. So we're just, all we're going to do is just make a little tick mark right there in the middle. Now see, that's going to be the very end of his little body, the start of his tail feather. I'm trying to make sure y'all stay in focus here. All right. And then we're going to draw 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. We're going to draw twelve lines leading up to his little body. So we need to count off. We need to make like twelve little tick marks. But the, this one will be on the end. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This will be six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. All right. So we got those little dots made, right? And it doesn't have to be precise, just so that you leave a little room between your dots. Because watch this when we start. Uh, drawing our lines I'll show you this when you're drawing up to the top of his body you want to leave a little space in here because if you don't it'll be harder to paint it'll be harder to keep the paint on the board as well so it doesn't have to be precise just so that you have a little bit of room there and all we're doing is going to our corners and our little marks, drawing our line. And you notice these little feathers are going to get wider. And that creates that little fan effect, how he's fanning out his feathers. Don't do that one. And you just drew his tail. His tail feathers, anyway. <laughs> so look at that. We might want to make a snapshot of that and have you some, um, you know, like, sometimes I do that, especially if that loves a blossom when I was trying to teach that. I had my pattern in different sections because the person who showed me had it like that and it worked out so good it was like eight steps instead of having it all on one pattern and I can do it now looking at the pattern but when I first started trying to figure out how to do it 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 just helps to have okay let's do this one and now let's go do that and then you build your bird so that's what we're doing all right so now let me get a different color so we can I want to make sure you guys can see this. Alright, now 
let's do his little body. So, you know, we got the bottom of him right here. So we're going to count up. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right. See there? And then we're going to build his little head. We got six. We're going to stay in that same row. We went over diagonally two. And then we're going to go over three. All right, and we're going to come down one. And then we're going to go back from the left to the right one more time. All right. Then, again, we're, we're making the inside of his head, so... Let's... Okay, here you go. So we went up six, diagonally two, to the left three, down one, back to the right, diagonally one, and then over to the right two. All right, then let's let's put the other side of his body here. So we're going to go down one right here. So this is a ruby-throated hummingbird. So we're going to build the rest of his body, and then we're going to put the a spot in here for the red. So we're going to go to the, to the left of his little starting of his tail feathers and from that line that we drew down all we're going to do is connect that. Alright, then you see this line? We're going to go down four one, two, three, four and then over to the end of his body. See that? Now that's where the red's going to be. All right, then we're going to give him a little bit of definition here. Um, let's go do the outside of his head. And y'all saying, well, where's his beak? Let's see his beak. Well, we're going to get to that. And that's the, I don't know why, but that's the most fun part, <laughs> seeing that beak. All right, so on the outside here, Let's go about three-fourths over. We're going to go up two and go over about three-fourths. Uh, I guess you could go over the whole entire width of that block, but it, I don't know. It just seems like it gets too wide then when I've done that before. So I just drew a line, my little tick mark down to the bottom, and then I'm going to go up one, two, three, four, five. I'm going up five. And then at the end of that block, at the left of that block, right in the corner, I made a little tick mark, and I'm going to connect that. You see that? All right. From here, then, I'm going to go diagonally again in that same row. I'm going up two. I'm going over two. And down one. Alright. Let's see. We almost got him. Let's put a line here. To give him a little definition down here on his body and then let's connect this and we'll make that another color all right now you ready for the beak really hard i'm teasing if not <laughs> all right we're going to make a tick mark right here you see that right here in the middle of that block well it's in the middle of the outside of the block 
and we're just going to go down to the bottom because this right right here is the end of his little beak. And we're just drawing his beak. See? So now he's got his beak stuck in that flower where they like it to be. All right, y'all ready for the wings now? Now, we could, let's go ahead and put his eye on. And you don't have to be precise with this little eye. You just, just draw your little eye. Like that. Now, if you're an artist and you want to draw it perfect, you can, but this is a quilt block, not a painting. <laughs> and I know there, there are so many talented people out there I'm just amazed at what they do with their quilt blocks and their their barn quilts. They're they're just so pretty. Okay. I digressed again. Alright, now let's draw that big old pretty wing. We'll change colors again. Alright, th this is not as hard as it looks like. It's just, if you follow along with the grid, you're going to get it. Okay. So, one, two, three, four, five. Let's count. We're going to start right here. That, that little, uh, when we went up five, and we stopped at that corner again, see it? That's, that's where our focus is going to be for the next few minutes. Because most of everything is going to lead back to that. So we're going to start there. And we're going to go over two. And count five. One, two, three, four, five. Alright. And then we're going to put our tip mark here. So you, you're going to be going one, two, three, four, five, six, down two. And make that tick mark or go over two and count five. One, two, three, four, five. And at the top of that. So you see that? That's all we're going to do. We made that tick mark and we're going to connect those two dots. And then we're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, over. One, two, three, four, five, six. So that'll be at the end, and we're going to go up to the corner here. There you go. I think that's, that's the start of it. And you can see that. See up to the corner. And we counted over six and went down two. Or you can go over two and count up five. That's just a way of double checking your figures here. All right, now we're going to go from that corner back back down to that little mark. Kind of all ro all roads lead back to this little mark right here for a little while. All right, then for the bottom of him. We're going to go here. You go up one. See where we made that tick mark here? I got you zoomed in so you can see what I'm doing, but I'm having to move the pattern around a little bit so you can see, but that's all right. All right, here at the top of that, that's where our next tick mark is going to be. So we're going to go over four, counting this one, one, two, three, four, and then we're going to go up two here. So at this tick mark, go up one, and where this line is intersects with it, make you a tick mark. And then you're going to go over, counting that one, one, two, three, four, and then up two.
Got it. Okay, then we are going to go over two and up two. See that? And we're going to do that again. Over two and up two. Now, you see these tick marks? Now, you would think that you could just go straight, but you can't. Okay. So, we found that tick mark here. We went over four, counting this one, up two, made a mark. We went over two, up two, and made a mark. Over two, up two, and made a mark. And then we connected those lines. But if I had went straight, you see what would have happened? We wouldn't have our curves in our wing. So you have to do it like that if you want your curves. Okay. Now, remember this mark, and we're going to go over two and up two, and where that intersects, we're going to make another tick mark. See that? And now, we're going to draw all of our lines to that mark. Okay, I think what happened was the camera cut off. And I could not find where I drew his wings. So I'm going to draw them over again. And instead of starting all over on my pattern, I'm going to draw them over again in black. And I think that I can explain it to you. So... For his wings, we're going to go to this tick mark here. Right here. And we're going to go up one. And where that line of his back intersects, we're going to draw a tick mark. Okay? And then, we're going to go up four. One, two, three, four, counting that one. One, two, three, four, and make another tick mark right at that intersection of those two lines. So a lot of our lines are going to come back into that, that tick mark. So if you get that right, you got it made. All right, so we made that tick mark. And we're going to go over two. One, two, three, four, five. So at the end of five, at the very top, we're going to draw a line that intersects with that tick mark. All right, then, again, we're drawing his top wing. So from that point, that tick mark, one, two, three, four, five, six and up one so it's the corner here see the corner and we're just going to connect those tick marks whoa got a little crazy there you see that all right and then we're just going to connect this important tick mark with the corner Okay, see that? All right, now let's move back down to this bottom one, the one we started with. And we're going to count over, counting that one, one, two, three, four, and then go up to one, two. And we'll put our tick mark there. And we're just going to connect those lines. 
all right then you see this tick mark again our important tick mark we're gonna connect those two and that that gives us the bottom of his wing here all right now you see this wing and what we want to do is come down to or let's count this block one two we're going to make a tick mark here and we're going to count three one two three we're going to make a tick mark there and then we're going to go over to and down to and make a tick mark and then over to and down to and we're back to this tick mark see so these lines need to connect to that one not our most important one but our second most important one <laughs> And then again on this one. So you have just drawn this big wing, and then that that's like a that's like his right wing. So this one will be his left wing that's got all the color in it. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six sections here. So for this particular section. All we need to do is go to go to our blocks, you know, we've got our grid, and just make a tick mark at each one of them where this line intersects. And then all we have to do is draw that line, draw those four lines into our most important tick mark. All right, now back up here. You, you see how this gives the wings a little definition and character? So we're going to draw those now. So if we've got all of these other ones, we're going to draw these. So we're going to go from that corner and just go down um, on the next line to about middle of your block here. And then down here about three quarters of your block. And then on this one, and maybe halfway, you know, where the lines intersect at in your block. And then this one about halfway. So then we're going to go back up here and just connect them to this, this corner, to this one, from this corner, to this one. In this corner to that one and then for the inside of that little section uh, just go down to where that line intersects you can make that as big as you want to but I would not go about halfway in each block maybe not halfway in that one that would make that a little bit too big that's a smaller wing just on the other side of that dot I mean, that line probably would work for you. It doesn't have to be that precise. Precise. Did that work? I'm trying to cover up that blue so y'all can see what I've done. Okay. All right, now, see, you got the wing. Except for these little, uh, little pieces of character down here little points of interest <laughs> and I just I just picked like a spot in between maybe halfway halfway here um, that didn't make sense like three just divided into about three and and once you make your little marks there then all you're doing is just making little diagonal marks And that just give it a little bit of character. You see that? And that's the wing.
I'm going to insert that into the video. See you back in a minute. Paint those a different color and it'll give that part of his wing a little oh, pizzazz. <laughs> okay, look at this y'all. Look what you end up doing. Y'all just drew a hummingbird. And now all you gotta do is paint it. Well, you drew it on a pattern. Now we gotta put it on the board. <laughs> so, stay tuned for part two and I'll show you what kind of wood I have, what we need to do to prep the wood, to prime the wood, and we'll draw this pattern on that block again. I may not put that all on there because that'd be kind of boring to see it again. Because you can re-watch this one over and over again until you get it right. Until you get it until you get it right in your eyes. You be you when you're satisfied with it, move on to step two. And that will be our board. And uh, I'll show you my paint, what paint I use, the tape, uh, some little tricks and tips for taping without having your paint peel. Um, again, a lot of little tips and tricks that I've learned along the way. I always learn from other artists. There, um, there's a lot of a lot of talented people out there, and so I just try to share with you guys the things that I learn along the way, and have fun. So I'll see you all in the next video. Uh, like it. Oh yeah, like it, and share it. Subscribe and click the bell for notifications. I need to write all that down. That's a lot of steps. But I really appreciate it if you do it. I honestly would. Thank you. Talk to y'all later.